Welcome back to Path to Glory, the Warhammer Underworlds podcast that focuses on competitive gaming, player development, and community growth. This episode was made possible by our patrons. Thank you to everyone who supports us. If you're interested in supporting the podcast monetarily, please check us out at patreon.com slash path to glory. Um, if that's not possible, totally okay. We still appreciate the listens and the ratings. I uh, love to see those numbers keep going. This is Aman Kusro, and I'm, as always, I am joined by my essential co-host, <laughs> Jonathan Davis. I was going to say, I was going to make a joke like that if you didn't. So very, very nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so in today's episode, um, it's another one of those episodes during the week of a lot of stuff to record and write. Um, mm -hmm. So we're going to be running and gunning here. Today's episode, we will be covering the Essential Card Pack Review. That is 60 cards, universal cards that will be relevant and legal in championship format for years to come, according to Warhammer Community. But before we do that, uh, we did get some new patrons, and uh, Jonathan's going to shout them out. Absolutely, yeah. We wanted to thank our newest patrons that signed up this week. Um, we had two new glory seekers, Jason and Chris, and two new aspiring champions, Mikhail and Martin. Maybe that's Ooh. Michael. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but apologies if I'm pronouncing it wrong. I think it's Michael. Probably. Or um, Mikhail. Yeah. <laughs> um, we really appreciate the support. Um, I think this is the sixth episode we've done this week. I don't know if we'll ever do this many again, but uh, you guys keep us going. So we really appreciate it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we are. Uh, we felt the pressure this time around because sometimes we can just be like, oh, you know, it's fine. We can record next week or something. But we were like, you know what? Like, I think I think we're both been pleasantly surprised by how fast the patron has been growing. And we've yeah. been, you know, big fans of your support. And, you know, we felt like we owed it to you guys to enjoy this quality content so thank you very much yeah it's also a lot of fun interacting with everybody in the discord so um, yes thanks a lot yeah a lot of fun yeah <clears throat> but, so without further ado let's jump into the first 20 cards from the 60 card essentials pack and these are objectives um, absolutely i guess it's probably worth mentioning that all of these cards are cards that we've seen before correct yes um, and uh, apparently they're gonna not they're not going to be cycled out is what they what they have said. Um, they're not going to be rotated. To come. So. Yeah. What, so whatever that means, it seems yeah. like these are basically the core cards. Some of these cards um, are also the cards that have previously been found in every starter set. Mm -hmm. So like supremacy and things like that. Um, Spoilers. Yeah. And <laughs> and and they didn't, um, but they didn't print them this season. In dire chasm, so I think it's kind of interesting that they decided to go this route. Um, why reprint the cards over and over again if you can just have one pack for new players um, with a bunch of cards? So exactly, <clears throat> it seems um, like that's uh, what it's for. Exactly, yeah, really good point. And and so when they say years to come, who knows? Maybe four, five, six years, and then they're like, you know what, new essentials pack, and that's really cool yeah. too. Um, but for now, um, I think there's some. Obviously, you know, just like in all the other core sets, there's some cards that just exist because they've been in the game for a while. Yeah. And then there are some cards that uh, will make you raise an eyebrow, sometimes both, and sometimes make you smile, and sometimes all three. So uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and get started with our first objective here. As always, we'll be alternating. I'm going to handle the objectives. Jonathan will get all the gambits, and then I'll end with the upgrades. So let's start off with Five Glory, Annihilation. Yeah. So, you know, this is a card that's always been in the starter sets before. I think it makes sense that it's in this one. Um, I don't like it. You don't like it. Go to the next one if you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will say I didn't read the card. So if you're not familiar with Annihilation, score this in the end phase of each enemy fighter is out of action. Very hard to do. Yeah, just hard even to do. With, even against like a three fighter warband. Very hard to do. And usually you've already won the game if you've killed everybody. Like... Yeah, it's a I may have. Uh, I, there may be games where I wiped out the other player and still lost, but I can't think of that happening too many times. So yeah. I just don't think you need it. No, no, no. This next card is pretty cool, though. Yeah. Um, and uh, the card art has the Briar Queen on it, and she was probably notorious for scoring this the most in uh, the years that this card was active. Branching Absolutely. Fate. Surge, score this immediately after an attack action if you roll three or more dice during the attack or defense roll, and they all show a different symbol. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. 
it's a great card. Um, if you haven't played with it before, um, if if you make four attacks and they all have three dice, each one has about a 45% chance to score this, and you have about a 95% chance to score it from one of those four attacks. So it's considered to be um, very reliable for warbands with a number of three dice attacks um, or with fighters that uh, can make a number of attacks due to their range. So Far Striders would have liked this card, um, you know. It's good. Yeah. It's good. I think it's one of the better cards. Uh, next card is Conquest. Two Glory. Score this in the third end phase of each surviving friendly fighter is in one opponent's territory. I do find this one interesting that it's the Sepulchral Guard on the cover, even though they're the slowest warband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you had to bet which warband has never scored this card. <laughs> it's this one. It might be them, yeah. Yeah. Um, again, cool another art, staple. Though. It is cool art. Yeah, again, another staple. I think this is good in, like, maybe Godsworn or um, Wild Hunt. You know, I see a lot of Grimwatch trying to jump into enemy territory as well. The problem is, or rather the challenge, is that there are some universal cards in the pool right now that just do this, uh, but can be scored before the third end phase and are just better and maybe easier. Yeah. So. Yeah. And the, the third end phase part of this card is the, uh, the clincher there, I think. Yeah. Makes it a little bit too hard to do. <clears throat> Next card is Denial. Three glory. Score this in the third end phase if there are no enemy fighters in your territory. <laughs> this one I like a little bit more than Conquest, maybe. Um, probably in best of one, it's a little bit better than best of three. Um, in the current meta, I don't think it's really good at all because I think everybody wants to be in your territory. So That's true. Um, so for that reason, we'll just go on to the next one. Yeah. This is going to be a shocker to a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> two glory called Great Gains. Score this in the end phase if you've scored five or more glory points in this round. This card was, I think, restricted at one point? Or no? That um, was Combination Strike. I think Combination Strike was restricted, yeah. which is almost the same card in some ways. Um, I think Great Gains is maybe a little bit more balanced. Um, yeah. But yeah, this is a good one. I think we're going to see a lot of this one. There's a lot of two glory end phase in the game right now. And yes. if you score one two glory end phase on the average turn, you probably also get to score great gains because you probably get a kill. You probably get a couple searches. So um, it's pretty good. I think we're going to see some of that one. Yeah. It's really, it's interesting that it's really good for aggro too because the glory mm -hmm. can be from kills as well. So you can get like two kills, maybe score a surge or two, and then one yeah. end phase card, and boom, there you go. That's great gains. Yeah, it's really just solid for everybody that has a deck they think they're going to be able to score through quickly. Um, a little bit of a win more situation, but at least it's balanced in that uh, it's kind of good, just good for everybody. Yes. Yeah, I think this will just be in almost everyone's deck, so it'll balance out that way. Yeah, all those poor one glory end phase cards. <laughs> yeah, well, speaking of the number one, our next card is Hold Objective One. So I think we're going to run through the next five fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. um, they pretty much do what they say on the tin. You get one glory for holding the numbered objective. Um, yep. So hold objective one has Vortimus on it. Pretty cool. <laughs> hold objective two has Elthari on it, which she's looking the most feminine she's ever been before. Usually she looks really scary, so that's cool. <laughs> um, hold objective three. I think that's Bushwhacker. Just yeah, I love the art on that one. <laughs> Bunch of traps everywhere ready to go. Yep. Uh, hold objective four. This is with Iron Soul. Um, mm -hmm. She's... Probably never been on an objective in her life, but uh, yeah, we'll keep going. <laughs> she's and bold then, conquesting there, I think. She's trying. She's trying. Yep. Uh, and then hold objective five. I think that's just Lady Arrow. Yeah, I think it's one of them. I don't remember if she has a dagger or not. I think, I think they think all she does. Do. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's one through five. Jonathan, what do you think? Well, these just aren't very good cards. Um, interestingly... They're actually just kind of hard to do. Um, if you have objective five, for example, then like that might be on the other side of the board. And if you manage to get to it, then it's only one glory. So they're just not very efficient. Um, but I think they're okay for um, new players to sort of figure out how the game works, I guess. Yeah, good fundamentals cards, and, and that's the whole point. It seems like it's a card that has to exist, is the way I've always looked at it. Like, yeah, It makes sense that they have it. It's just not very good. So. Yeah, makes sense that they exist. Good point. Um, speaking of making really smart things to say out loud, let's look at making a statement. 
Um, score this in the end phase if your warband holds each objective in one opponent's territory for three glory. Yeah. This one's cool. Um, I think we've we've seen this one before. Um, it was from, I think, the Chosen Axes expansion, so it's been a, around for a while. Yeah. Um, and it's one of those cards that I think isn't top-tier competitive material, but can be a lot of fun to try to make a deck specifically designed to do this. Um, and, and I would say in the current meta with all of the objective flipping available, um, this might be a little bit easier than something like Feed the Beast Grave. Um, so I don't know. I think it's something you could consider for some more bands. I don't think we'll see a ton of it, but um, I think it's a cool like tool to have in your toolbox if you want to make a like a weird, fun deck. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think this is one of the cards that you score on the way to scoring Feed the Beast Grave. Maybe. Um, Maybe. Some people like to play like Feed the Beast Grave, but then don't actually run the card Feed the Beast Grave. They run Coveted Spoils instead, which right. is like four, three glory? Um, I think it's three. Three. Um, and Feed the Beast Grave is like five, right? I think so, yep. So if you yep. could do like, if you can somehow finagle it to where you get Covenant Spoils and making a statement on the way to feed or feed the beast grave or maybe even without it i think it's pretty solid yeah but i think it slots into that deck particularly yeah i think that's uh i think that's good i mean we, we've been talking about the um stalkers a little bit and how they might be good at treasure hunters and things like that depending mm -hmm. on where you place the objectives um maybe that's something that you could try with them so i don't yeah. know it's cool the wraith stalkers, it's cool yeah. it's hard to do and you have to creepers, definitely build yeah. a deck around it yeah wraith creepers yeah yeah Next card is No Remorse. Sir, <clears throat> score this immediately after a friendly fighter's attack action that takes an enemy fighter out of action if that attack action had damage characteristic greater than the target's wound characteristic for one glory. Yeah, um, awesome. I think this is a welcome addition. Yeah, I mean, you know, Molog, Hrothgorn, Crushes, love it. Um, Prince Duval. Anyone who can, like, start off with three damage, like, this is great for Kagra. Um, yeah. Anyone who starts off um, with accessibility into higher damage it's a great card for them yeah it's a little bit of a meta call um you know you either have to invest a lot in it to score this off a high wound fighter or um you know or it's just good against low wound fighters so um but it's it's cool it's a good aggro surge that is scorable i think in a lot of situations yeah um this next card is in, i like it for many reasons uh, let's start <laughs> with the card art um well, the card's called path to victory and it's wild hunt triumphant over molog so haha -ha. I need to see um, if I can get this like on my wall. For real. I need um, some posters. So, <laughs> yeah. So this card currently exists in the game. Um, but yeah. after Beast Grave rotates, you will still be able to play it. And I think it's one of the, probably one of the most balanced cards ever to be created. Um, lots of fun, and it's very easily counterable um, if you get wise to what your opponent's trying to do. So that's why I really like it. So, for holistic reasons, score this in the end phase if one or more enemy fighters were taken out of action in the preceding action phase and your warband holds two or more objectives for two glory, it's a duel. Yeah, it's probably one of my favorite objectives in the game um, just because of how flexible and, I would say, balanced I think it is. So, I think it's, uh, I'm glad to see that it's going to be around for a while. Hell yeah. Next card. Plant a standard. Score this in the end phase if your leader holds an objective in enemy territory for one glory. Yeah, um, I think this is okay. Um, I don't know if I've ever played it before, honestly. Um, situationally, I think it's okay for Molog or Hrothgorn or somebody with a leader that's very aggressive and hard to kill. Um, I think it's a cool card, though. Yeah. Well, speaking of cool cards, here's a really cool one. <laughs> um, Pure Carnage, score this in the third end phase. If seven or more fighters are out of action for three glory, love the card art here. It's Godsworn versus Reverse in the card art and looks like Karsis is last man standing, which is pretty cool. Um, what do you think it. about this card? I like this card a lot. I think this is probably the first card that uh, is going to have a big effect on how the game is played. Maybe great gains too, but um, this is big. Um, I think this card might bring Gits back. I think this card is really good for Godsworn Hunt, really good for Reavers. Um, any big warband right now that just wants like some of that glory back for primacy or all the kills they just gave. Um, yeah. I, I don't even like third end phase cards that much, but with the right warband, this is pretty much guaranteed, which is sort of what I require from a third end phase card. Like I just need to know I'm going to score it. Um, I like it. 
I think it's yeah because it has to be worth holding in your hand if you draw it early, right? Yeah. Um, and and that's yeah. always the challenge with third end face cars. But dude, cannot wait to run this with Godsworn Hunt. Cannot. I mean, this is great for Grimwatch too. Mm. You know, aggressive Grimwatch as well. So yeah, I mean, it's better than set the tempo probably in the right warband. Yeah. Um, if you think about a lot of the other, you know, three glory glory cards that people are considering right now, I would say if you have six or more fighters, and maybe even five is okay. Um, you think about it. Yeah, big fan, big fan. Yeah. Um, next card is strong start. Score yeah. this immediately after the first fighter is taken out of action in this round. If that fighter is an enemy fighter for one glory. Look at that art. I love it. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think this is another um, welcome addition. I think this is a uh, classic card. It came out in the beginning of the second season, I think. And um, it was in Echoes of Glory. Yeah. Yeah, it was Echoes of Glory. Um, I like it. I think it's it's a if you're playing aggro and you just want to score off getting kills and stuff, I think this is worth taking. You won't always be able to score it, um, which I think is what makes it kind of balanced because it also doesn't like have any conditions, like you know, no territory conditions or anything. But <clears throat> I think it's a welcome addition to the game. I think so. I think so too. Um, it'll be really nice to fit into warbands who are trying to play aggressively but are having a hard time finding that like sixth maybe surge. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, these next cards, I think we'll just run through pretty quickly because we've seen them forever. Um, sure. But if you're a new player, we'll do our due diligence and read the cards. <laughs> Supremacy for three glory. Score this in the end phase if your warband holds three or more objectives. Yeah. It's kind of the classic um, hold objective card. A little bit hard to score right now because of all the pushes and uh, how much like competition there is over holding more objectives and things like that. But um, a staple of the game, depending on the meta. Yeah, a little slow, but um, good yeah. stuff. Um, next two cards are both for two glory. Tactical Supremacy 1 and 2 and Tactical Supremacy 3 and 4. What do you think? Yeah. Um, I'm not uh, surprised that these are in the set. Um, these were also, I think, reprinted in uh, the gift pack. <laughs> so they're they're back. Um, Again, yes. I'm not crazy about these cards competitively, but I like that they're around... Um, I think if you want to make a classic hold objective deck that uses supremacy and tactical supremacy and, you know, path to victory and dominant position and maybe coveted spoil, like if you want to do that, you can. Um, so I think it's cool that that option is there. Um, like we were saying, I think it's just a little bit difficult to do in the current meta, although I don't know, we do have some movement with um, some teleporting and stuff going on. So I don't know. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, it does really well with keys as well. So that used to be a really big thing in Night Vault is people take these kind of cards, stack keys, maybe beginning of Beast Grave as well. So that's something true. to consider. Yeah. If you like a keys, <clears throat> if you like one key, two key, three key, four key. <laughs> um, last objective from the Essentials Kit, um, the 20th objective here, a Victorious Duel. Score this immediately after your leader's attack action, which takes the enemy leader out of action, which is also in the gift pack, I think. <laughs> yep. Yep. But um, staple card, been in the game forever. Makes a lot of sense. Leader killing another leader. Two glory. Three if you count the kill. Um, yeah. So pretty pretty good card if you prep for it. I think it's great for Molog. But even then, I don't even think Molog's taking it right now. Card art is cool. Um, Scritch and Vasilic uh, had a Samurai Showdown. And <laughs> Scritch was the winner. He is the greatest. <laughs> Um, yeah, I like this card a lot. I've, I've played this card in, um, Hrothgorn deck before. Um, I wanted to do like an aggro focus there at the end of uh, beast grave. I think, um, you do have to plan for it. You basically the whole game, you have to purposely not kill the enemy leader until you draw this card out. Um, but then you get an amazing reward when you do. So I think it's situational and, uh, you know, maybe not the most obviously powerful card, but I think it's a lot of fun to, um, put in your decks and, um, I just like the design of it. I, I'm, I'm glad that it's uh, around. <clears throat> People right want to play that kind of go big or go home style. Right, right. Okay, well, Jonathan, out of the, all the cards we've seen in the past, <laughs> some currently that exist right now, which one are you... I already know what you're going to pick. Ugh, and I want to say it, but you got it. It's, which it's, one's not, your favorite? it's not partial carnage. It's not, uh, not diluted carnage. <laughs> it's pure carnage. That's right. That's right. Um... For me, I think, I mean, I, I think it's Great Gains and Branching Fate. 
nice to have those back. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to have those back. Oh, that op- the branching fate like opens up a lot of, uh, like I've been having some trouble finding like the sixth surge for certain war bands. And I think branching fate is going to be that for some, I think uh strong start could be that for some. Yeah. Um, so. Branching fate might just bring thorns of the Brad queen back into the equation. <laughs> yeah, it might. it might. It's crazy to think about it, but like that card alone can be, like okay, cool. Maybe let's try these guys again. So looking forward to well, seeing what people along do with, with it. pure carnage too. So well, yeah, I guess probably I'm gonna to lose three or four. Meta. Probably gonna lose three or four ghosts and uh, yeah, kill three or four guys. So yeah, okay. Well, let's jump to the gambits. Absolutely. So the gambits, gambit number one is center of attention. Uh, choose one fighter and push each other fighter that is within two hexes of the chosen fighter up to one hex so that they are closer to the chosen fighter in an order you choose. Yeah. Um, I love great this card. card. Yeah, great card. Um, this is going to be used in a lot of ways. So, you know, you mm-hmm. can pull people off objectives. Um, you can push your own, you know, fighters onto objectives if you position this correctly. Um, you can lure fighters in before you do a massive scything attack. Uh, lots of cool stuff here. You can lure fighters into the, to their death through a lethal hex as well. Mm-hmm. So a really, really good and versatile card. Love the card art here. Everyone just bowing to Vasilic. Um, <laughs> honestly, I love the card art. I love the wider, the wider frames as well. And I think, I think I'm very happy to have this one back. Yeah, yeah. I think in the current meta, um, you take this after you take distraction. If you don't have a similar like um, faction version, um, I think we did actually just get a universal one that requires range or something um with the vampires but i think i like this one a little bit better so if you're not going to spend that restricted slot for nightmare in the shadows i think you consider this one that's a really good point very 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 good point uh the next one is commanding stride love this card it's pretty cool yeah yeah i love the picture too the art is do you want to do you want to read the card Yeah, it's push your leader up to three hexes. After this push, your leader must be in a starting hex. Yeah, this is one of my favorite cards. Um, it's you know Davey's an early reviewer as well, so he sent me a message. He's gonna be like, interesting to see Storm Sire on Commanding Stride, and I was like, why is that? He's like, because you did the yo-yo thing at Adepticon, um, <laughs> and so that was something I used to do a lot. Was I would charge with Storm Sire and then Commanding Stride him back, so that he's out of you know out of danger. Um, or command, yeah. you know, stride him somewhere else. But this is a great offensive tool. It's a great get out of jail card. This is fantastic. Um, you're going to see this with Morgox, Hrothgorns, Molog's, Curse Breakers, any warband that loves their leader, getting yeah. around, pushing them around, and just mowing stuff down. This is your friend, <laughs> and I love this card. Yeah, it's a, definitely a good one. The next one is Confusion. Uh, choose two fighters that are adjacent to each other. Place each fighter in a hex that was occupied by the other when you chose them. Uh, another classic, um, mm-hmm. obviously just here because it wasn't in the starter set. Yeah. Uh, don't know what happened to Sean. His hair went all white. Um, <laughs> two years in the B script will do that to you, I guess. I guess so, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, classic card. Very good use case here. Great to jump on an objective, remove someone off an objective, uh, maybe throw someone into a lethal. I like it. Yeah, it's one of those cards that I don't see a ton, but when it's used on me in the right situation, it can be just be devastating. So yeah, well, very said. cool. Um, next one is counter charge reaction. Play this after an enemy fighter's move action that is part of a charge action. Choose up to, or choose one friendly fighter and push the chosen fighter up to three hexes. The chosen fighter must end this push adjacent to the enemy fighter. Very cool. Another classic yes. push card. Yeah. Yeah, classic card. Um, yeah, yeah, it's good. It's another. It's again. It's another one of those cards where you're like, I don't know if I take this, but then when your opponent plays it, you're like, oof. Yeah, it's particularly good for um, war bands that kind of need to get near you for some reason. Like I've seen a lot of it in Thorns. Um, you maybe you consider it on the Wraith Creepers um, to get that inspire on somebody important. Um, you can also use it if they're about if you're about to get pushed into a lethal. You can sort of circle around the enemy fighter and uh, avoid that. So it can be important that way. So it's it's a good card, and uh, I, I think it's a bit of a like like classic. Um, so I, I think it makes sense that they've included it. 
Yeah, it's also really good to help scoring with the uh, the Crimson Hounds and the, uh, as you mentioned, the other card as well for the Wraith Creeper. So yeah. if you like attacks with supporting fighters and have glory surrounding it, Counter Charge is a good option. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the next one is uh, Daylight Robbery. <laughs> We've seen this one, and it's actually Currently, restricted. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Um, I think the the caption is quite on point. It was here a moment ago. It really was. <laughs> um, it says, re roll one attack dice on a roll of hammer or crit. Take one unspent glory point from one opponent. Yeah, this card is really good. There's a reason why it's restricted. It's because it, it causes a lot of negative play experience. Um, yeah. And it can be devastating. It can actually win you games. Um, so essentially what happens is, let's say you wait till your opponent gets their first glory. And generally, mm -hmm. opponent will place an upgrade on that on that fighter on a fighter, excuse me, to fulfill the other conditions of the other objectives in their hand. Uh, but on a 50-50, you take that glory away, um, and then now you get the glory. So it's a two glory swing. Yeah. And you potentially brick their whole hand, causing them to, you know, lose that round and potentially not be able to come back from that. So very powerful card. Um, sad to see it back, but I can see why at the time this was probably made, it wasn't restricted, you know, because these have large lead times. So. Yeah, and it's interesting. I'm not really sure if, in general, I think it's a really, really powerful card. I just don't like it very much. I, I haven't really played with it either, though, so it, it may be better than I give it credit for. Um, we'll go to the next one. Let me fix my picture thing here. Sorry. Um, okay. Uh, the next one is Determined Effort. Plus one dice to the first attack action made in the next activation. It's not bad. It's kind of like Victimize and Sitting Target, but yeah. those do kind of other things. I think this is better than Sitting Target, um, but uh, probably not better than Victimize. Hmm. I guess it can be better than Sitting Target. I guess it depends if... Uh... How much you want that in snare yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah you're right it's solid um next one is duel of wits reaction play this after an opponent plays a ploy draw two power cards uh, this is good <laughs> yeah i mean to the end is really popular so we gonna see this a lot because all the other draw cards are yeah. getting restricted and i wouldn't be surprised if we crown of the dead on that list at one point yeah, I mean, man, now you can take this and Unnatural Truce or just this if you, you know, we're, we're taking Unnatural Truce. Um, so, yeah, I think it's uh, very powerful. I think it makes sense that it's in this pack. Um, there's just so much card draw in uh, the Beast Grave season that uh, it seems like a lot for this meta, but um, I don't dislike this card specifically. Yeah, once Beast Grave rotates, it's going to be a solid card. But right now, it's exactly. Kind of adding additional you know cheese onto the pizza <laughs> if you will exactly yeah yeah uh, we can go to the next one a flickering step roll eight dice choose one friendly fighter and push the chosen fighter up to a number of hexes equal to the number of crits rolled um i guess math wise you are likely to roll at least one crit um on eight dice should be two right i think it's slightly more than one like two or three but, yeah. yeah well yeah um so yeah, i like this like one 1. 1.3 or something but yeah this one i think is uh i think it's cool that it's in here because it is a fun card um i would say it's solid as like your second maybe your third sidestep depending on the card pool um it's cool whenever now yeah. and then you high roll it and uh, you get to push like four <laughs> yeah it's an interesting card and it does teach like some sort of like mechanics to newer players yeah but after you buy something else, you replace it immediately. I think so. Yeah. I mean, right now in the in the in the game, um, there's not really a ton of friendly pushes. Like there's sidestep, and then if you have some in your faction, and then uh, maybe hungering advance. So I could see playing this a little bit. Um, although I think there's a card coming up that I would take before it as well. <laughs> I don't. I don't ever take this card. I don't okay. know why you're trying to spin it, but I don't think you would ever take it either. I have taken it before. Um, have you? I think it was. I think it was like early Nightfall that I took it, but that was a long time know. ago. 
<laughs> you, you've grown. Don't revert. Yeah, that's that's possible. Um, the next one is Grievous Repost. Reaction, play this after a failed range one attack action that targets a friendly fighter if there was one or more crits in the defense roll. Deal two damage to the attacker. Yeah, Grievous Repost is a great card because um, it essentially punishes your opponent for uh, not only missing, but then, you know, if you're able to roll that crit, um, it's it can be pretty devastating. It can take them out of action as well. And on a fighter with two dice, it can be really good. Um, this was really popular with Gits and mm -hmm. uh, kind of was with Grimwatch as well. So if you're able to roll a critical success, then I think this could be a benefit to you. And it kind of works well with Pure Carnage as well because you might be able to eliminate an enemy fighter on their turn. So, cool yeah, it's it's one of the strongest ping damage cards in the game. It's just a little bit situational as to when you get to use it. So the more defense dice case. you have, the better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very cool. Um, next one is healing potion. Choose one friendly fighter and roll one defense dice on a roll of shield or I guess it's block or crit. Heal two that fighter. Otherwise, heal one that fighter. Uh, that's pretty cool to have this one back, I think. Yeah, staple. Haven't seen this one in a while. Um, unfortunately, I think some of the bigger wound fighters are going to like this more. <laughs> um, that's unfortunate because they already have a lot of ways to heal right now. But aside from that, I think, yeah, staple card makes a lot of sense. A lot of games yeah. have healing potions. Um, it's just <laughs> like a trope classic. So like the card yeah. art as well. Um, and even if you have four wounds, that is could you know, heal you up back to full health in a pinch. Yeah, I've always liked the balance of this card. Um, the random nature of it, um, I think, is great. I think if it was just healed two, it would be a little bit too strong. But um, heal one isn't terrible if it does fail. So I like that it's not that punishing. But uh, I like it a lot more than Ferocious Resistance. So um, yes. The next one is Inspired Attack. Plus one dice and plus one damage to the first range one attack action made by an inspired friendly fighter in the next activation. Wow. <laughs> I, I love this card. I think yeah. it's so good. Um, yeah. Fantastic. Great for God's One Hunt, of course. Oh, boy. Um, but I'm I'm a huge fan. And, uh, you know, I said at the beginning of the year, like one of my, you know, war bands I was going to keep an eye out on for was the God's One Hunt. And then more and more that these cards come out, the more and more I'm like, it's time <laughs> to rock. Yes. Yeah. They're an 80s rock band. At least their hairstyles <laughs> are. But, yeah, great card. Very, very good for aggro. Very, very good card in general. Like, probably one of the most popular cards in Night Vault. It's going to be around, and it's going to be... You're going to see it a lot for a while. Yeah, and it's... I, I like the design of it because it is very powerful, but it's really only powerful for warbands with range 1 attacks and an, an easy inspire condition. So Godsworn's great. Um, Gits are really good. Um, some other examples. I've taken it in Wild Hunt and things like that, but in that case, it's a little bit more balanced because you can't use it in the first round, so... Very, very cool. Uh, the next one is Inspired Command. Choose one friendly fighter other than your leader and pick one. Choose or push the chosen fighter one hex or give the chosen fighter one guard token. I love this one. Yeah, this was actually one of my favorite cards from the leaders pack, which mm -hmm. this is where it's, this is reprinted from. I, I really like how it's teaching, a, you know, a new player like this can only be used if your leader is alive on the board, not necessarily, um, you know, uh, not necessarily as easy as a sidestep, right? Or place one fighter on guard. But I like the option between the two. I think most often than not, you're going to use that push because sidesteps are great. But the guard can be a huge boon in a tight situation, especially if you've got a fighter with two dodge or two block. Yeah, the flexibility of this one's great. Um, I know Thorns of the Briar Queen used to play this one a lot. Um, very strong on them. Anytime you really need to hold a certain objective or really don't want to be pushed into a lethal, the guard's great. Um, so very excited to have this one back. Mm -hmm. I guess you just can't use it on the leader, which does balance it out a little bit. Um, next one is Keen Avarice. The first range one or range two attack action made by a friendly fighter in the next activation has plus one dice and cleave if the target holds an objective. So this is actually really good in the current meta um, because there are a couple war bands that love holding objectives. Yeah. Uh, crushes do. Uh, Grimwatch do, Seraphon do, the Starblood Stalkers. Um, and because we live in that age where like you're never sure if someone's going for dominant position or not, um, there there just happens to be fighters on objectives just in case of that eventuality. 
And mm-hmm. so being able to, more often than not, giving one of your fighters range one and range two attacks an extra dice and cleave is really cool. Uh, because if you're trying to take down objective, hold, like fighters holding objectives, um, so that you can either get on them or stop them from scoring, then it can be pretty interesting. Um, it definitely is a meta call, I think, because like victimize is just straight up the same thing, but less of a limitation. Um, even the card that we just went over, which is uh, what's it called? Um, determined effort determined or effort. inspired attack. You know, inspired attack is insane. You know, yeah. but that's not that's in a different category. But <laughs> um, but it's cool if you're looking for a lot of accuracy. I think this pack provides you some. Um, if you can maintain the situation. Yeah, yeah, and, and I'm not a big fan of cleave, but if you're also getting plus one dice, then it it's great. What so. you're not you're not a fan of cleave? <laughs> we'll go to the next one. Um, the next one is lethal ward. Pick one objective token, deal one damage to any fighter in the same hex as that token. Very cool. So all all I need back is shard gale and profiteers <laughs> are back online. I know, I know. I'm ready for it. Uh, great card. Yeah. Reasons mentioned above, a lot of people like holding objectives. Uh, might as well punish them for it. And it can <laughs> yeah. help you score unexpected effort. Oh, yeah. Uh, Pitfall, I think. Yeah. Unex- did, I say, did, I say, did I say effort? Yeah, yeah. We've um, done so many of these weeks. Give me, give me some slack. I it's unexpected pitfall. <clears throat> um, the next one is Mighty Swing. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my God. <laughs> This is this is big. This is probably the biggest card we've talked about so far, the, yeah. as far as the impact that it can have. Rothgorn yeah. says, "I'm going to inspire now." <laughs> yeah, go ahead and read it before we jump into it, just yeah. for holistic purposes. The, the the first range one attack action made by a friendly fighter in the next activation has scything. Yeah. So for those of you not familiar, scything means you can just hit everyone that's adjacent to you, that yeah. enemy fighter adjacent to you. Um, so you can manipulate this, set this up with some pushes, whether it's a distraction or two, mm-hmm. and then charge in and potentially get three kills. I remember in Shadespire, like Magor would just charge into like three, like Spoko Guard or like two Reavers, or even in Night Vault into some Chain Rafts and just bye. Thanks yeah. for playing. Three Glory plus Trophy Belt or whatever it was at the time um, was nasty. It really just turns whoever makes that charge into a, a, just a terrifying missile. And then in this meta with these elite powerful fighters um, that you yeah. usually put a bunch of upgrades on, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, the interesting thing is that you can actually use this with um, Thug, for example, like from Crushes. Yeah. And on each attack, you can spend X number of wild counters oh, to no. improve the um, <laughs> accuracy of this card as well. So, because like if yeah. you played Inspired Attack, right, like only the first attack or, or Determined Effort will get that buff, but. Because right. Thug can do it per attack. You know, he can maybe like roll like three smash scything. Um, pretty nasty. Yeah, yeah. That's that is cool. Yeah, there's so many different so many different things you can use this for. Like Rothgorn obviously becomes insane when he plays this one if you're anywhere near each other. Um I, I guess it's it is obviously good against the larger war bands, but I think it's also in some ways it may even be better against the smaller war bands. If you can hit and kill two you know, big fighters because you have the right upgrades and stuff on. Um, that's just going to be devastating. Yeah. Dude, imagine, <laughs> imagine a, uh, let's see. Um, Grundon. Okay. With like a great strength and a sting of the air grub. So he's like at yeah. five. And then you uh, <laughs> like have two crushes lined up next to each other. You play, you know, maybe determined effort um, or yeah. sorry, inspired attack. And then oh, you just man. run in. Mighty swing it up. You can kill two crushes. That's pretty dirty. Yeah. You might be able and to kill not, more. <laughs> you might be able to kill all three in one attack action. Yeah. Um, and it's not likely, but hey, it could happen. It's and happened I'm gonna before. Be honest. It's, I'm going to be honest. I can't wait. To, I'm, that's my goal to do it one time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to do it. I'm going I'm to report back because it's going to happen. Um, keep in mind, though, your opponent is getting potentially like half supports and double supports on defense. Yeah. So that can that can come up. But um, I mean, who but knows, you really man? only need one or two kills out of you know two or three. I, I think anyway. you want more than so, one. Um, yeah, but I think that having the option to just do it is great. Love it. Yeah, very very cool. Um, next one is mirror move. 
Reaction. Play this after an opponent pushes one fighter. Choose one other fighter and push the chosen fighter the same number of hexes. This is also another favorite of mine, I think. Yeah, this is probably one of my one of my most favorite cards. Um, I played this a lot, a lot, yeah. especially at the beginning of Beast Grave and a Night Bolt. Um, pretty much, if your opponent, and the cool thing is a reaction, so I think this can block opponent reactions. I don't know if it blocks Snare. Does it? Um, I think it does. This one does it block snare, snare. It doesn't yep. block Pit Trap. That's what exactly. It was. Mm -hmm. So this one will block a Snare, which is pretty neat. Um, Let's see. Uh, this is really good because you can opponent throws one of your fighters off an objective. Maybe you can stick another one back on, or maybe you can push one of their fighters off an objective, or maybe into a lethal hex. I mean, there's just so many cool things you can do, or maybe yeah. set it up for a mighty swing the next turn. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's very flexible because you can choose a friendly or an opponent fighter. Um, so very cool. Very cool. Um, the next one is Misdirection. Reaction. Play this when one friendly fighter is chosen by a ploy. Choose one other friendly fighter that could be chosen by the ploy. That fighter is chosen instead. This is a really cool addition, I think, to the uh, the game. Well, I mean, so I think it's in the gift pack. So. It's oh. Still, it is. Yeah, it you is. Just, so maybe we just don't just, play it. <laughs> yeah, we just don't play it. There's just yeah. no need. Um, I think like it was really good for Molog at one point. Maybe it could be good for Hothcorn, like a distraction. And you're like, no, I'll just move one of my Noblars instead, or like my Shrooms, yeah. which is cool. Um, but I think there are just so many good cards right now. It's really hard to compete. A lot of these essentials are going to come into play when Beast Grave rotates because there's going to be yeah. a significantly less number of cards in the pile. Um, so I'm surprised this was actually released this early, given the fact that um, you know generally it, these rotations happen in the fall, sometimes the winter. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I guess there's a lot of redundancy, but I think we're going to see these cards impact more later in the year. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, and they're going to be around for a few seasons, it seems like. So uh, very mm -hmm. cool. Uh, the next one is No Time. Uh, this was also in the gift pack. Power cards cannot be played until after the next activation. Uh, this is a very cool card that I think makes sense that it uh, sticks around. Yeah, it's a very, very high skill cap card. Mm -hmm. uh, but one that can be that can win you a game truly yeah yeah it's very cool um it does also mess with the way that uh, upgrades and things are done in the end phase because it uh, you play it at the very end and that activation is in the next round so um you can use it that way or you can just use it to secure a situation so very cool stuff um go to the next one which is shifting shards uh, pick one objective token in an empty hex and move that objective token into an adjacent hex. Uh, so it's pretty good. Um, it's kind of like a sidestep if you're an objective warband because you get to just slide the objective under you. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we need it right now, but I guess it's nice to have the option. Um, well, it's a good counterplay against Mischievous Spirits, right? Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know, so like someone Mischievous Spirits you and then they presumably get one, you get one back, and then it's impasse, right? So none of you are scoring dominant. Slap this in afterwards, boom. Yeah. Path to victory. Yeah. Stuff like that. And now that we have the other pushes, you could take you could take your own mischievous. You could take this. You could take sidestep. You could take uh, inspired command, and you could really defend against some of those mischievouses in a way that we haven't been able to do up till this point. So. Yeah, inspired command and commanding stride. You can slip one on to uh, starting yeah. hex, and then three hexes away, boom. That's true. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, the next one is sidestep, <laughs> an oldie but a goodie. <laughs> it's it's very simple. Uh, push this fighter, choose one friendly fighter, and push them fighter one hex. Great card. Glad it's in the game. Glad it's staying for at least a couple years, and glad that it's not going to uh, clog up some core sets moving forward. Yep, love it. Uh, all right. Well, did you have a favorite of the uh, gambit oh, so far? Some good ones in here, man. <laughs> I know there's some really good ones in here. I think my favorite. Inspired attack. Yeah. Um, I'm real happy to see Center of Attention back. That was a really cool one. Yeah. Obviously, um, uh, Mighty Swing is going to be a game changer. Like, yeah. I mean, there, there's just so many good ones in here. Commanding Stride, you know, like yeah. uh, Duel of Wits, Healing Potion, Inspired yeah. Command, Lethal Ward, Mirror Move. Great cards. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. I... I it seems like a great selection to me. Um, 
there's not really anything in there that's like that game breaking other than maybe Mighty Swing. I, I, we're just gonna have to see because weirdly like Mighty Swing was around for two seasons and it wasn't like that popular. But it seems like it would be incredible right now. So I mean it was really good on Magoras. Yeah. Three damage yeah. with cleave swinging into a bunch of dudes. Yeah. We'll have to it see if it dirty. makes the the ploy slots right now. So there's so many there's like so many more options now. It's really cool. Yeah. Um Okay. I well let's guess... jump to the upgrades. Yeah. So we've gone through forty cards, twenty more to go. Uh first card, Army of One. If this fighter is the last surviving friendly fighter, plus one defense, plus one dice, this fighter's attack actions. A very cool card. Um probably the best for the three fighter war bands. Um, yeah, but uh, I don't know. It's a it's a great bonus. So I played this a lot with Far Striders and Shadespire, and then yeah. I used it a little bit in, with Curse Breakers in the beginning of Night Vault, and then ultimately phased it out. But it's a great card, um, and I think it's going to find a lot of play in this meta. Um, and this yeah. is another reason why you don't take Annihilation. <laughs> Maybe I I wonder if it's a little bit too slow. Um, but for those three fighter war bands where maybe this is going to happen, uh, maybe you think about it. So it is. Yeah, very you good. lose two crushes. You stick this on a crush, and now they're at two block. Yeah. You know, maybe like Ard Sculler is now at like three fury, four fury. <laughs> crazy. It's true. Um, next card is Bag of Tricks. Love this card. We very use cool. this to, to great effect in Night Vault. Um, <laughs> action: Search your power deck for a card, reveal it to each opponent, and add it to your hand. Then shuffle your power deck and give this fighter one charge token. Yeah, I've always been a big fan of this card. I think this card was actually in the deck that I was playing Profiteers with at Nova. So it has we won both a grand won a grand clash. clash with this card in this deck. Oh, very cool, very cool. Um, it's really just great because the way that it, 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 the more combos that you're taking in your deck, the better this card becomes. Because although it does take an action to draw the card out, it's it basically acts as a copy of whatever card it is that you're looking for. Um, so if you have, you know, if you're trying to do the speed combo, maybe you don't need three, um, you know, ways to get plus two movement. Maybe you can take this instead and then just spend an activation to draw exactly the card you want when you need it, um, which can be very, very powerful. Um, it does take glory and it does take an action, but um, I think it can win you games if the right card comes out at the right time. You can pull a mischievous spirits out. You could like the the situations when you need. It. A single card way more than you need an activation um they'll come up so super cool this card this card is a combo and a combo enabler yeah so if you're playing a greedy deck um this can help you get those cards you need to score those objectives to keep cycling and keep getting that glory train going i really i really like it yeah. um it, it, interesting that it might be actually too slow for this meta um yeah but i think like control control decks are gonna love this um and then certain like you know, um, flex stacks are going to like it. Yeah, it is better on the fighters that have expendable fighters that don't need to activate because it does give you that charge token as well. Um, but sometimes, yeah, sometimes one. like towards the end of the game, there's the only thing that you want to do is draw that exactly the card that you need. And sometimes you just can't do it. So, yeah. Um, yeah, instead of taking that like, oh, should I draw? Like I have a 33.3% chance to win the game. No, now you have a 100% chance. <laughs> yeah, um, that happens. And, uh, you know, stick this on Grawl, stick this on, and just like the card art, I've used this on Iron Hail a lot, on even on Allenson. I mean, like, yeah, if you've got a weaker fighter that's not really doing much, I mean, even Grawl can look through a bag. <laughs> it's true. Legane. Legane, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next very, card very is, awesome. Yeah, good card. Champion's Fortitude. You can reroll one dice in this fighter's defense rolls. I think this is a great addition to the game. It's a okay defense option. Um, I think it makes sense that it exists. Yeah, solid card. You're going to yep. see this maybe quite a bit. Because um, I think it competes with Formidable Defense instead of the uh, plus one. It's a reroll, so it's almost kind of the same thing. Yeah. It doesn't, have a, doesn't make you lose an attack dice, though, or make you a quarry, which in some cases you might want to be a quarry, but right. something to consider. Yeah, I think Wormspat like it probably the most, and then uh, other people think about it. Yep. Dark Darts is the next card. Three range, three fury, one damage with cleave. Attack yeah. action upgrade. What do you think? Um, this is a cool one. Um, I, this was a favorite with the, in the what armor days. I would say. Yeah. Um, now I don't think it's quite as good. It's not a bad attack action, but uh, I just don't know if we need it right now. 
Um, I think there are some better range three options, but uh, it's a nice uh, bit of nostalgia. <laughs> Can help with branching fate too. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, this next card, I already can hear the Max Bernstein jokes on the card art already, <laughs> unfortunately. But uh, Duelist Speed, reaction after this fighter's attack action, but not during a super action. Push this fighter one hex. Yeah, very so cool. So every time this fighter attacks, you can push them one hex, but not after a charge. Yeah. And, uh, well, no, you can use it after a charge, but you can't use it um, during a scything attack. Correct. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is a great card. Um, it's also, like, it just makes sense that it's in the game. Like, it's just cool. So I'm, I'm glad that it's back. Yeah, yeah. Very good card. It's uh, going to see a lot of play with fighters who you want to get a lot of activations out of. Um, and exactly. Even, even fighters who, you know, maybe you will make an attack and then you jump onto an objective. So it can be your extra sidestep, right, if you wanted yeah. to. Yeah, because of the timing, you get to use it before you check if you score certain surges like Hidden Purpose or Bold Conquest or uh, I think Gather Momentum is worded that way as well. So it can yeah. uh, definitely be useful for all those things. Yes. Next card is Earthing Stone. It's a Metalith. It wasn't a Metalith back in the day, but it's been upgraded <laughs> to one now. If this yeah. fighter is in the same hex as an objective token in one player's territories, fighters cannot hold objectives in that territory. Yeah. And this is uh, this is interesting. This is a card that I have taken in decks before. I don't think it's very good, but I always want it to work. Um, so it's cool that it's around so I can keep trying it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. I think you could maybe do it in an aggressive deck looking to... If you win the boards and you give your opponent three objectives. Yeah. But I'd rather just get plus one dice. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's the problem with it. Um, and they can just push you off. So, yeah, but this next yeah. card, wah wah wee woe. Um, <laughs> fighter's ferocity on a critical hit, this fighter's attack actions at plus one damage. Love it. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Um, it's great for ranged fighters in particular because, uh, like range three, because it's a way for them to boost their damage. Um, and uh, it's crit fishing, which uh, who doesn't like that, right? Everybody loves it, especially when you <laughs> stack a bunch of dice in the attack. So, yeah, yeah, big fan. But even bigger fan of the next card. Speaking Man. of ways to increase range damage. <laughs> yes. So Glory Seeker is back. Plus one damage to this fighter's attack action. The target a fighter with a wound characteristic of four or more. Great for ranged attacks. Great yep. for all attacks, really, when you're looking to take down the big guys in life. Yeah. The fact that it doesn't have a range restriction is really big. Um it's just so good. Like it's only not good against three wound fighters, basically. Yeah. Um, there are so many ways to add damage now to your fighters in this game. It's insane, I know. and I I love it. <laughs> I love it. That's why we've we've seen so many healing cards, and like so many cards yeah. that can can offset that damage because there's so much damage now. I know you can take great strength, savage strength, glory seeker, fighter's ferocity, barrel symbiote, sting of the urgrub. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Concealed weapon, inspired attack. I don't think we have concealed weapon. Did, did, did we that was that? fighter's ferocity yeah fighter's ferocity yeah yeah, yeah. i wish we fighter's had concealed ferocity. weapon <laughs> glory seeker poor sean Sh sean glory was my concealed seeker. weapon uh, hero yeah yeah, so. yeah sorry yeah no that's um, fine the next three cards are staples um yeah great fortitude with uh morgok chilling in the on the cover uh great speed with one of the banshees and then great strength with Molog ruining Targor's life. Um, <laughs> yep. Classic cards. Um, I hate that every time I play Great Strength, I'm going to have to look at Molog, but other than that, yeah. Staple cards, great cards. Um, I think the best two, of course, are Strength and Fortitude, but uh, Great Speed one day will have its day, I'm sure. Yeah, it makes sense that they're all in here, and uh, two of them are really good. So yeah. why not? Next card is Guardian Glaive. This is an attack action upgrade. Range 2, 2 smash, 2 damage. If this fighter holds an objective, you can reroll any number of attack dice in the attack roll. This is also like one of the brand new cards in the gift pack. Yeah. Um, and so now it's back. What do you think? Um, I don't think I have played this card before, but I have seen other people play it, and it's not bad. Um, when you're on an objective, 2 smash, 3 roll is pretty good. Um, yeah. 
I think right you now... You can re-roll it... any number of attacks, not just one reroll. Oh, yeah, re-roll. yeah, yeah. So it's, it's actually very accurate when you're holding an objective. Um, I think at the current in the current meta, it's a little bit overshadowed by the um, Amberbone weapons. Mm-hmm. But uh, in a situation where, like, after rotation, when the Amberbone goes away, I think uh, this is something to keep an eye on. So it's a nice 100%. tool to have if you want a good weapon. So. Yeah, I played in the it's one of the straight out straight out of Shadespire thirteen. I had a chain rasp, kill two of my Magor's fiends with a guardian glaive. Wow, yeah, yeah, so. particularly good for the objective warbands that want to be on objectives anyway. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. Next card, horrifying armor, minus one wound to a minimum of one, minus one dice from adjacent enemy fighters' attack actions to a minimum of one. What do you think? Um, I think that this card is too much of a like side upgrade like it doesn't even really give you something that you want uh like like there are cards in the game that are minus one dice from adjacent enemy fighters by itself and they don't even give the minus one wound so i I think it's a little bit too expensive i guess the nice thing about it is it's universal whereas those other cards are faction only so maybe there would be a situation where you want it but i think it's going to be pretty rare especially with all the range in the game and how good range is so yeah I mean, I think I think you can put this on like a two wound fighter because like two wound one wound doesn't really make much of a difference. Um, That's like, true. And just make sure they're not around lethals. Um, yeah. But uh, aside from that, I think it's hard to make work. Yeah, I think so. Cool the art though. I love that. Yes. Yeah. Glissette looking boss. Um, speaking of cool art, it look like Magor is <laughs> channeling his inner red skull here. Um, it's called Leech Stone. It's a metalith. Fighters within two hexes cannot be healed. <laughs> yeah, this is very interesting. I don't think it sees a, it'll see a lot of play, but it it might. Is it this is this the ferocious resistance counter we've all been waiting for? <laughs> if Bag of Tricks would let me open my card catalog and pull out any card that I want uh, that has ever been printed, then I would like this card every now and then. <laughs> yeah, every now and then it's like, oh, you're Molog. Oh, oh, you're trying to heal him. Yeah. No. Yeah. Sorry. If this game had like sidebars or whatever they're called, when you have extra cards yeah. that you oh, can you choose. Oh, you slot in lead lead stone yeah. every time. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, crushes Molo Rothcorn. <laughs> Chill. I'll take yeah. it. But otherwise, it's a little bit uh, too situational there. I think. Yeah. The next card is one of my one of my favorites. I I, I had this card in my deck because it was my backup for what armor and uh, forget the hence back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mutating Maul. Range one, two smash, two damage. Before the attack roll, pick cleaver, knockback one. This attack action has that ability until it has been resolved. What do you think? Yeah, this is a, a very uh, fun one. Um, I, I think now that we don't have what armor or um, get the hens, I'm not sure if I take it as readily, uh, but I think it's a nice option to have. Yeah, certainly is. Yeah. Um, I, I love it. I think it's a good card, and uh, I think there's a lot of avenues available. Um, yeah, but you're right. It might be overshadowed by Amber Bone and Soul Tooth weapons for now. <laughs> I think everything is. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Potion of Grace. Reaction after this fighter is given one move token. Discard this card. Remove that token. Now this is actually really good in this meta because there's mm-hmm. so many cards that can dump move tokens on your fighters. Yeah. So this can be a great way to say, you know. Sorry, I countered your move token. I'm going to be able to continue to do my game plan. Uh, but in addition to that, you can like move twice. Um, you know, maybe move a quick fighter fast yeah. across the board, things like that. So, or maybe use an effect that requires you to take a move counter, and then mm-hmm. you know, vice versa. So I really like it. I like it. Yeah, it works great with Beast Trail, um, in particular, yes. and uh, really just any situation where you think they're going to energy drain you or. Um, What's the uh, poison? Barb Latin net. Yeah. Well, I Ladin. think that's a charge token, but. Oh, winded. Uh, yeah, winded. Uh, that might be a charge too, but. Is it? It is. I think energy charge, drain yeah. and lead bone dust are move, and then uh, the, I mean the vampires have a spell that gives you a move. Dark so you put this on a fighter, and, it, and they just know that they can't do that. Uh, I guess it is. I guess the weakness of it is that you do have to have it on the fighter already before they are given the move token, but uh, I think it's a nice little piece of tech to have if uh, you feel like you need it yeah agreed um next card is quickening greaves in each round you can do one of the following push this fighter one hex before the roll to determine who has the first activation or push this fighter one hex after the final power step very very powerful card in night vault and the beast grave meta and uh could be what people need 
to get objective back and running. Yeah, I think this one coming back is a pretty big deal. Um, I think this card makes um, absolute stillness um, even more scorable. And I think people have been playing that a little bit more recently anyway. Um, it's so it's so good. Um, this is maybe one of the best uh, upgrades that we've seen so far. Yeah. Is it better than Glory Seeker, though? It might be. For some warbands, I think it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good up. It's a great card, great card. Um, yeah. Regenerative Charm. At the start of each round, he'll won this fighter. Eh. Yeah. That's okay. So it's all right for really high health warbands. Um, I guess the uh, <laughs> Yotharis kind of like it. Um, because high wound fighters are worth more glory, like maybe you think about this in a crushes, but it's a little slow because it's at the end of each Very or the slow. start of each round. So your your opponent has four activations just to, like to stop this from working. Yeah, that's that's the challenge with this one. So um, it probably just sits there. <laughs> yeah, it just regenerates in a card binder. Yeah. Next card is Shard Collar. At the beginning of each action phase, you can pick one objective held by this fighter and one other objective, then place each objective you picked in the hex that contained the other objective. I'm pretty sure we just saw this as a universal. Um, I think there is a maybe a ploy that's similar. Yeah. Um, but basically, I think this is... Actually, no, I think that the Castigators have a version of this. I think that's what it was. I'm pretty sure we just did one in a review. But while you talk about <laughs> it, I'm going to look it up. Sure. Um, I think this one's pretty good if you're trying to do the classic um, hold objectives and maybe you're taking the hold one, hold two, hold three, hold four. It's a very niche um, that you need to do that uh, because of the way that numbers work. Um, I do think that the Storm of Celestis maybe think about this if they're doing some of their weird objective holding. Um I'm not sure if that's the best way to play them, but uh, this is another one that I think is a nice piece of tech to exist in a game. Um, you just probably won't see it that often. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's just you're, I think you're, the the thing that this really talk about is it's it's very slow. Yeah, yeah. Pretty sure it was Storm of Celestis. I'm, I'm a little curious now. But, yeah, maybe it was. I just looked through the Universal review that we did for the vampires, the Crimson Court. I yeah, don't see it, but, it may uh, be Reconsecrate that we're thinking of because it's uh, an action and they can sort of switch which objective they're on. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah, um, I don't know. So this is automatic at the beginning of each action phase, So, but it's it's still kind of slow. Let's yeah, see. that's the problem with it. Um, if it was like in the end phase or, yeah, like right before that uh, where you could score, that might be a little bit more, more powerful. But I have seen it used like early in the game's life um just some you know good effect but yeah well the last card of the set and one that's actually pretty good i think in some <laughs> situations range one attack three smash two damage called sword breaker on a yeah. critical hit pick one of the targets ac attack action upgrades discard that card what do you think so i think the critical hit effect is uh situationally decent i wish it was any upgrade and <laughs> not an attack yeah. action uh, yeah but three smash two damage is great. Um, it's not as good as Amber Bone Sword, obviously, but uh, you know, as far as a universal that sticks around from season to season, um, and maybe even just as a backup to Amber Bone Sword, like it's solid. Yeah, I think this is a great backup to Amber Bone Sword. I think this is great for weapon caddies. Like if you want to, like Skaven use this card a lot. Yeah. Um, so like if you have a warband that like maybe doesn't have very accurate fighter attack profiles, but can come back or be nasty like Grimwatch Swordbreakers. I think it's a good option after you run through the Amber Bone and the Soul Tooth, which you might not have any room left after that. But if you do, <laughs> Swordbreaker is the move, and especially after pro possibly a rotation as well. Um, and I don't so think we have be... a Soul Tooth Sword, right? Uh, well, we haven't seen one yet if there is one. Right. Um, so I think this is better than most of the Soul Tooth weapons. Maybe the Dagger, if you want to trade the chance the for three wild. damage. I think you take um, the dagger all the time. But it's nice that it doesn't have the limitation where it has to have a move or charge. Um, well, that's just for the reroll. If you don't want right. the reroll, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Still a solid attack yeah. action, but something to consider. True. Um, I really like a lot of these upgrades, actually. There's a lot of good ones in here. Um, mm -hmm. Which one's your favorite? I think my favorite is probably Quickening Greaves. Okay. 
I think we're going to see a lot of that one. Mine's Glory Seeker, of course. Yeah, and then maybe my second one is Bag of Tricks. I don't know how great it is in the current meta, but I think it's a really cool card that is in the game. Yeah. So I think my second one would be tied for... Uh... Uh, yeah, it's either going to be Duelist Speed or Fire mm. Ferocity, I think. Yeah, those are all, those are all really good. Great cards. Um, Duelist Speed actually has some great card art. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is cool. So, yeah. Very fun. So what do you think of, uh, the Essentials pack? Dude, I really like it. Um, I like how the Games Workshop is being proactive with the uh, the future of the game, mm -hmm. and they have um, created this set that is not only going to be great for new players, but for players who maybe didn't like play in you know Nightfall and Shadespire. Maybe they started yeah. in the Beast Grave, or maybe they started in the uh, the Dire Chasm. So this is really cool for for all of them, and for veteran players like us, we get to bring some of our favorite cards back which I think is really cool. But I think the most, the biggest benefit I think is that from now on, anytime any set releases, they will be new cards. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the most exciting thing because we're all card whores. So I love it. Sure. Yeah. We, yeah. We I are. think we love, we love seeing new cards. <laughs> yeah. And I think for new players, um, I think this is a really solid um, selection. I think that the, uh, the objectives are maybe the weakest portion, um, but the ones that are good in there are pretty solid, like Great Gains and Strong Star, Branching Fate, No Remorse. Like anybody can play those and it's functional. Um, I think the Gambits are great, like Duel of Wits and Mighty Swing and Inspired Command. Like there's so there's so many things that you can do with those Gambits. Um, you could probably make a pretty solid Gambit deck with just a faction faction ploys and then some of these cards. Like I, I yes. think, like there's there's just so much utility in this selection. Um, the upgrades are, I would say, lacking maybe a little bit of health, but you have great fortitude, so like not really. Um, it's pretty good. Like yeah, you have the Did damage. You, you have Vanguard? the. Uh, what? Did you mention Vanguard format at all? No, no, and I assume yeah. that this is legal in Vanguard. So yeah, I would I would assume if the beginner format would include the beginner cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you think this so. is actually a great addition to Vanguard, and provides a staple where you can always use these cards no matter what. Yeah, um, and they might even dominate Vanguard at one point because there are some really <laughs> solid ones in here. So, dude, I I'm a big fan of the set. I think it's it's really good for the the future health of this game, mm -hmm. and for bringing our friends and family into the game, and and you know other individuals that we'll meet over time. So. I like it, man, and I love the new card art. I'm gonna just use the new card art. Uh, I have the old <laughs> cards; they're gonna stay in the sleeves. Yeah, because I'm gonna use the new stuff because it's cool. It's better. Yeah, why not? And some of the, I think some of the wording's a little bit cleaned up too. Like it is. Um, so, yeah, very yeah, cool. Yeah, keep in mind if you're gonna if you're gonna use these cards uh, and you're not gonna buy this set, make sure you find out what the updated wording of the card is because all cards will now update to the most updated wording, similar to the gift pack. Yeah. Um, so that's something to keep in mind of. So your card may have cleaner rules so that you may not be able to use certain rules interactions maybe are unintended. Um, but again, I recommend if you're a completionist as well, you're going to love how some of these <laughs> cards look. Um, not really sure on the price point, but I want to give a big shout out to Games Workshop for providing both of us a review copy for the Crimson Court, the starter set, and the Essentials Pack. Uh, we are very grateful and we love talking about content and sharing it because we love this game so much and we want everyone else to love it just as much as we do and make their friends and family love it too. Yeah, we really uh, appreciate luck with, that from them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And good luck with converting your significant others to love this one as well. <laughs> I'm not yet successful. She'll play, but is it? Com it's not It's not competitive. So. Yeah, I think I uh, might go a little bit too hard. <laughs> when i play this game so <laughs> yeah 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 the uh when well, we're talking about the ones that have been reworded the two that i noticed were center of attention which i think had an faq at one point um and now i think reflects that and then uh dual mm -hmm. speed i don't think it said it couldn't be used in a super action before so i think that's yeah, there were the other there were a couple cards i was reading where i was like this just seems like mighty swing says scything now right right yeah. like that's another big one um so 
I'm yeah. again a big fan of the card art too. I love, I love, I love the full, full bleed <laughs> card art. So, like yeah. Earthing Stone is now a metalith, whatever the hell that means. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we have another metalith, but I don't know what that does. So I guess we we'll have to see. We got two metaliths in this essential pack. Oh, full bleed wow. stone as well. Oh, okay. Interesting. So. Yeah, big fan, and uh, I think if for the mentions reasons mentioned above or before rather, um, I think you should definitely pick this up if you don't have access to these cards because yeah, uh, there are some cards alone that are meta defining for sure. <laughs> yeah, mighty swing and pure carnage, glory seeker, um, quickening graves, all that quickening graves. Very cool to have those back. So yeah, looking happy. forward to uh, games in the new meta and deck building some of this stuff. So I'm I'm just looking forward to three damage Thundric and uh, Lund. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you throw Fighters Frosty on there on Iron Hail. I know we have the Castigators now too with the crossbows. They're going to be hitting three for three, range. maybe four. Maybe if four can... if they roll a crit. Yeah. Jinx, you owe me a soda, buddy. Uh oh. You owe me some glory. <laughs> I want that glory. Uh oh. Shade glass. Uh, okay, well, um, thanks everyone for uh, for listening to our uh, review here. Really appreciate it. Um, again, buy it. And if you already own the cards, <laughs> then get get excited to use them again. And uh, I think it's going to make a big splash in the meta. Um, these are all legal uh, exactly seven days from when you listen to this review. <laughs> so uh, get to deck building and get to planning because uh, it's going to be some fun. Yeah, there's absolutely. Some, there's some cool, cool in-person and online events coming up to, to check out as well. Yeah, yeah, and thank you for uh, listening to all of these reviews. Um, we should have some patron content with the end phase content that we've been doing um, in the next week or so. Um, I know I am excited to do some deck building, so I'm sure we'll pick um, something from that and uh, talk about what we've been messing around with. So uh, keep an eye out for that, uh, patrons, and uh, thanks so much for uh, all your support. Um, if anyone else wants to join our current patrons, they can do so at patreon.com slash path to glory. You can find all of our blog content on path to glory podcast.com. If you have any feedback, questions, or comments, let us know on Facebook, Twitter, or discord at path to glory podcast. Please rate and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen. We've also recently started putting these episodes on YouTube. So uh, if you prefer to watch the episodes, uh, you can see our, lovely undead faces or creepy faces or whatever we've been saying recently this is a handsome brown face oh okay don't call it <laughs> these are essential these are essential faces in this episode but that's right we've had some creepy and uh, vampire faces before so let us know what you think about the youtube videos if there's anything we can do to uh, make those better uh, excited to listen and as always thanks for listening and we wish you the best of luck on your path to glory speaking of path to glory man god sworn can't wait Oh my. Sean is You're... back. He's back. <laughs> this, this is path to grand clash right now. I know. I know. You could you could oh, I can't even wait. Inspired a deck. Stay tuned. <laughs>